Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we shall take a look at the, uh, the concept of population and sample and uh, see what is the difference between these two. So what is a population? Population is the entire group, right, that we want to draw our conclusions about. Sample is a specific group that we will collect our data from. So size of the sample is always less than uh, the total size of the population. So here we have some a uh, couple of examples. So say we're interested in studying advertisements, variety jobs in the entire uh, USA. So the population is basically uh, advertisements in the whole USA. Um, so it's not possible for us to study all of these advertisements. A large amount of resources would be required for this. So instead, we can collect a small sample. So say, in, so we can go for studying the top 50 search results for advertisements for IT jobs in USA on a specific day, right? So another example is, say we want to draw some conclusion or study something about the undergraduate students in the entire Netherlands. However, instead, we can pick a sample of 300 undergraduate students, say from three universities there, okay? So population is what we ideally want to study and sample is basically the data that we uh, end up collecting, right? So typically the data that we collect is subset of the population and that is a sample. So next we look at the uh, term parameters. So para, the word parameters are associated with population. So suppose we are interested in studying a variable X, which is basically height of a student from Wake Forest University. So my population is all of the students at Wake Forest, right? So this variable, right, will have some density. So remember if you have taken uh, probability, you study different uh, types of distributions like normal, uniform, exponential, and so on. So this variable has a certain density and we will denote it by f. Then the mean of this variable, which is the population mean, right? This mean is associated with the actual variable of interest. Um, is uh, denoted is, is basically expectation of x and is denoted by mu. The population variance, right? So variance of this random variable is denoted by sigma square and the definition is given in this fashion. Uh, so if you have not taken um, 315, that is if you have not taken the probability course, then you uh, might not know what this expectation of x stands for. If you have, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't know, no worries. We're not going to discuss this a whole lot. It's not very relevant to the course. I just want to highlight the difference between the idea of population parameters and or, or population related parameters and sample related stuff. So suppose we're interested in studying two variables, right? X1 and X2. X1 is height of a student from uh, Wake Forest and, uh, and X2 is weight of a student, right? So again, this is again uh, concerning the population, right? Uh, so, but now we have two variables, X1 and X2. So now, uh, instead of looking at two variables, X1 and X2 separately, we can think of this vector X which contains both x1 and x2. So a random variable is a vector or we have a random vector x. So the mean of this vector, again denoted by mu, it's just a vector, right, where the first element is expectation of x1 and the second element is expectation of x2. So we take mean of the individual variables and we put them together in a vector, right? So population variance of x1, like before, so I'm going to call it sigma1 squared, right, because I have two variables now, and variance of the second variable, is, say, is sigma2 squared. So since we have two variables, the relationship between two variables or, or the linear relationship between them can be captured by covariance. So covariance is given by this formula, 
and is denoted by sigma 1, sigma 2. Again, this has got nothing to do with the sample that you're collecting, right? These are population parameters. So we can write this, we can summarize all of the variances and covariances in the covariance matrix, right? Sigma. So sigma is a notation that we shall use for population covariance, where the first element, sigma 1 squared, is the variance of the first element. Uh, then the second element in the first row is sigma 1, 2, then sigma 2, 1, and sigma 2 squared. Um, note that uh, sigma 1, 2 and sigma 2, uh, 1 are the same right so this is a symmetric matrix right so the diagonal elements are the variances of the involved random variables so i'm repeating this because a lot of students were um, unsure about how to enter variance and covariance numbers in a matrix form right so take note to how i am arranging um, elements in this variance covariance matrix so now we're interested in studying some stuff about the population. So we collect some, uh, so we collect um, information on some sample, right? So this sample, we arrange it in some data form and that's what I mean by data matrix. So when I have a sample, I arrange it in a matrix form and I call that as a data matrix. So suppose the investigator is interested in P variables um actually i should say p is strictly greater than one because this is multivariate right we've got to have at least two variables but it's, it's completely okay to have one variable as well so these variables are recorded on n units so xik denotes the value of kth variable for i unit so it is important to keep a track of notations here so x i k the first subscript is for the unit and the second one tracks the variables so then all of the uh, data that we have can be represented as this matrix x right so x has n rows p columns n is the number of units and p is the number of variables so this is the notation we are going to use throughout this course any data set we are going to arrange it in rows all the units are in rows all the variables go in columns right so x1p is the information or the observation for the first individual on the pth variable np is the observation on the nth variable on the on the nth person or nth unit on the pth variable so it is important to keep a track of how we are arranging uh, this information so a quick example uh, so four receipts are uh, collected from a bookstore and the following data is recorded so we have two variables here right dollars and sales and number of books um, so arrange this data in a matrix form and also write the dimension of this matrix so this is a quick example it is an easy example but make sure that you are clear on how we are arranging uh, variables in this course. So that is all for uh, this video. So, uh, so in this video, we took a look at some of the population uh, parameters. Uh, the next video will take a look at um, we'll take a look at uh, some of the concepts related uh, related to the samples, right? So we'll explore. Um, the samples. Alright, see you in the next video. Bye.